Sunday, October 7th, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Guys, we've got a new tropical storm in the Caribbean. Tropical Storm Michael has just been announced from the good guys and gals over here at the National Hurricane Center. You can see the storm situated right here off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. Looking at the update statement from the NHC says, Satellite wind data indicate that the depression has strengthened into a tropical storm named Michael. The maximum winds are estimated to be 40 miles per hour with higher gusts. And we look at the interactive map and you can see that there are indeed higher gusts actually now and in the future associated with Tropical Storm Michael. At some point on its journey from here off the coast of Cancun in the North Caribbean up through the southeastern U.S., somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico, it should become a hurricane. Whether it's here, offshore, what is that, maybe 100 miles, with wind gusts of a 100 mile an hour, sustained winds of 80, that would be a Category 1 hurricane. That's a forecast that's subject to change. It depends on how long it stays in the Gulf of Mexico's warm waters, which are right here. These are some of the warmest waters on the planet. So the slower it moves and the less wind shear that it encounters, the stronger it can get. Right now, there is a little bit of wind shear in the area. If that wind shear departs, in fact, let's just take a look at it. The wind shear changes all the time. And it's these red lines right in here that are kind of hard to see on this model. But the red lines are wind shear. And they are uh, what create unfavorable conditions. You see right there, red is unfavorable, green is favorable. That's where it's at right now. It's forming in favorable waters and a favorable environment. And it's going to be in this area for the next few hours. In fact, what, a day and a half, according to this interactive model, 36 hours in this same general area, very warm waters. So it could form into a hurricane much quicker. We'll have to wait and see. Either way, it's been upgraded to a tropical storm. Most of the models are in agreement that this thing is going to make landfall somewhere in the Florida panhandle. That could involve, especially if it's a strong hurricane, a uh, significant storm surge because of this low shelf in here. Everybody's fully aware of the storm surge capabilities in the Gulf of Mexico. It's happened before and it can happen again. And this storm could potentially create storm surge and high waves in the Gulf of Mexico. And I want to emphasize once again that the longer it spins in these warm waters, the more time it sits here and moves slow like you can see on this chart. At the SSEC, that's slow movement. Each little hurricane icon represents 12 hours. And then you see it gain speed there. So it goes a little faster through there and then slows down a little bit before it makes landfall. But those are some incredibly warm waters. Some of the warmest water on Earth. Looking at another model here showing pretty much the same thing. Making a landfall sometime on Wednesday. And the Florida Panhandle looks like to me, going back to Google Earth, somewhere in the Panama City Beach area. Right in here. Possibly high winds. I'll show you a couple of different models. This is from windy.com. This is a screenshot I took earlier. And it's still showing the same thing. Making landfall with wind gusts of 137 miles per hour in some areas. Those are not sustained. Those are gusts. But still, those are very strong winds, and that would be probably at least a Category 2 storm, and who knows? I mean, it could be a Category 3, could be a Category 1. I think either way, it's going to be a strong system that's going to bring a lot of rain with it, regardless of what it is. Here's a look at it at the GOES-16 infrared, and you can see this thing is reaching incredible heights. The dark blacks represent height. And the taller these things are, the stronger they are. But when they encounter wind shear, it tilts them over and they don't function properly. But right now it's in a very conducive environment for this thing to become strong. Here's a look at some rainfall totals for the next 10 days. And this is assuming it makes landfall in the Panama City area. We're looking at 9.1, 9.3 inches in the Panama City area, 8.4 in Lynn Haven, I think there were some areas that saw, uh, or maybe see 10 inches there, alpha 10 inches. But unfortunately, this is going to scatter rain all through Georgia, even over into 
the Carolinas. Check this out. This is the last place that needs rain. You're looking at possibly five inches in parts of South Carolina, almost six inches maybe in some places. Manning could see six. Florence, 4.9. Marion, 5.6. Going over into North Carolina, Whiteville, 5.6. Wilmington, 4.4. Fayetteville, 3.7. I think there was another area I wanted to look at over in the sound. Bellhaven, 6.3. Man, that's the last place that needs rain. New Bern, 4.1. Myrtle Beach, 4.8. Conway, 6.5. And this is from Hurricane, well, by then it would be Tropical Storm, uh, Tropical Depression, Michael, when it's over the Carolinas, but still dropping a significant amount of rainfall. 10 inches near the Panama City Beach area in the coming days. That's in the next 72 hours. Sea surface temperatures here. That's some of the warmest waters on planet Earth. Here's these very high-reaching cloud tops. That's near the center of rotation. That now has a center of rotation. It's now a tropical storm. Again, those are as tall as it can go. It's as high as it can measure. In fact, even some of those white dots you see right there are off the charts. This storm has a incredible chance to become a very significant tropical storm hurricane. It really does. Primary motivator, these warm waters in the Gulf of Mexico. So we'll have to wait and see. If you guys are along the Florida Panhandle, the Gulf of Mexico area between New Orleans and say uh, Panama City Beach, in fact, to the right of Panama City, this storm here has got a very wide wind field. It could turn into a very big storm. And this is the European model showing it making landfall on Wednesday. Unfortunately, after dark, there's never a good time for a hurricane landfall. But when it makes landfall at night, the problem with that, especially if it has high winds, is the power. If the power goes out, then it makes it difficult to see what you're doing in very ominous conditions, especially if there's a lot of rain involved and flooding starts to, you know, fill the streets and the neighborhoods and communities, the power goes out, it makes it tough. So there's never, like I said, a good time for a landfall, but right now the models are showing a landfall at night near Panama City Beach with very high winds. And this is according to the European model over at windy.com. So Look for a significant storm, guys, in the coming days. This storm has very tall cloud tops. Take a look at these cloud tops right here. Those are over 60,000 foot right there. These are now moving to the north with a counterclockwise rotation. That's officially now Tropical Storm Michael. Soon to be Hurricane Michael making a landfall in the next 72 to probably 82 hours. I don't think it'll linger on past four days because it's going to gain some forward speed, but it is going to hang around the Gulf of Mexico for a while, or I'm sorry, the Yucatan for a while. And the longer it stays in those warmer waters, the stronger it's going to, to become as long as there's not a lot of wind shear. And right now, from what I've seen, there's not a lot of wind shear in the area. What wind shear there is, it's kind of minimal. So this thing has everything in its favor as far as strengthening goes. So a big heads up if you're in the Florida Panhandle. There may be a hurricane coming your way in the next 72 hours. Might be a Category 1, might be a Category 2. Who knows, it might be a Category 3. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a super day, and as always, be safe out there.